Hello. It's early March, 2022. Birds are tweeting here in uh, Northern Virginia, dog barking down the street at my home. Uh, I want to make a quick video here. There's a little bit of excitement going on here. Tomorrow I'm going to be heading out uh, to the AT a few days, just see what's going on with me. Uh, blow the stink off me, as my mom used to say. But I wanted to uh, show you something here. I wanted to do a little compare and contrast between the original Z-Pax Duplex, which I bought over three years ago, and which was my standby. I carried this uh, the entire AT, the entire PCT, and I believe the, ent the entire CDT as well. Uh, with a, with a, yeah, I take that back. I, I carried another one, and uh, when I got to northern uh, New Mexico, I sent home for this one because I like this one better. It's showing its age, and I'll, and I'll show you a little bit about that. And I, in December, pop for a Z-Pax Duplex XL. So I'm gonna do a little compare and contrast. Uh, and I literally have not been inside this. I haven't set it up until just now. Haven't been inside even, even now. You'll see me get inside it here in a moment, my, sort of my first impressions. And I'll sort of do a compare and contrast. Okay, first let me talk a little bit about my old standby. The, uh, the XL. As you can see, I got this in camo, uh, which I never regretted, uh, because it has like this extra camo layer on it. It was heavier, maybe like an ounce heavier, but as you can see, it, um, it is more opaque than the very translucent um, materials available in, in the single color Dyneema. And uh, I'm going to get in and talk a little bit about the modifications that I made to this and will almost certainly make to my new tent, as well as uh, sort of some of the drawbacks that I saw for this tent. Let me get inside here. So why am I getting rid of this? Basically, it comes down to the zippers uh, completely went out, and I... I tried different things. I tried, uh, you know, zipper lubricant. I, uh, yeah, I tried pretty much everything. Okay, I'm gonna get in here. So first off, I want to talk about. <laughs> so you can see where this 72-inch uh, air mattress goes, as far as that end and that end and the foot end. I'm six one and a half. Used to be six two, but you know. Things happen as you age. So I'm gonna get inside. Let me just say about this tent. Um, this became my cocoon. I remember talking to Cougar Bait about that, and he's, he's the one who came up with the term for it. Uh, I would get in here, I'd have everything laid out, I would know where everything was, and it became what I, uh, I, I felt secure. I felt safe. I felt I knew where everything was and I could relax at night. Okay, so as you can see on this tent, uh, the pockets are at each end, which isn't the greatest. I never really use these pockets, but I will point to something here. Um, the chief deficiency of this tent I discovered the very first night that I used it in the Alps when it rained and I got up woke up checked out the tent and let me show you what happens here so I'm six six one right and I would press up against this now what's happening right here is that the waterproof material here is no longer overhanging the bathtub because I'm pressing it out with my feet slightly. And what will happen is the water will come down the outside of this and just get scooped right inside and puddle inside the tent. 
um, and I'm just too big. Uh, and a similar sort of thing could very easily happen at my head, whereby I'm pressing out, and now this water comes in and just fills up the bathtub here. As I mentioned, uh, the two built-in pockets are at each end. The modifications that I made to this are, I added one over here, up off of the ground, which I think is a better place to put it. Uh, and so I, I, I put it off on this side, and many times I would, if I was cooking inside my tent, or I do the cooking outside, but I am inside the tent, this is where I would put my spoon or something that I was dealing with that I didn't want to, I wanted to keep clean, keep handy, and uh, didn't want to have on the ground. The other modification that I made is putting a pocket up here. And for this, I would use, I would put my glasses. And I would also put uh, typically my headlamp up here. And the third modification is that you see this this line that I put on the ridge line. There are two little loops that, have, that were already on here. So I just put some knotted material inside. And uh, from that, I would hang um, my secondary lamp. So I would always have a secondary lamp other than my headlamp. I have a tiny USB sized thing and just clip it on there with a micro carabiner and it would light up the inside of the tent so I wouldn't have to use my headlamp, I wouldn't have to expend uh, the energy from that and it gave a, a wider uh, beam, if you will. So I think that's one of the things that I'm gonna make. You can see here, you know, this, this zipper has completely gone out. Uh, basically, through Montana, I had to <laughs> not have any insect uh, protection, but fortunately there were very few uh, insects at that place. Okay, now let me uh, get out here and I'll continue. And one more modification, really a repair, uh, I did last year, uh, very early on last year, as a matter of fact the first night on the AT um, that it rained, I noticed that I was getting um, a lot of uh, rain coming in through this seam and first I tried to uh, use some seam sealant sort of glue material that didn't work quite so well and what I ended up doing that did work well actually uh, was retaping this uh, over the years it had just become abraded enough and stretched out enough that uh, the water was slowly seeping uh, through the seams uh, but by taping it up, I uh, pretty much stopped it. So uh, if you are getting some rain coming in, I would just suggest that you retape those seams. And here's uh, one of the differences. Uh, so the old original uh, duplex has two pullouts here. Uh, the lower one is the one that is rigged um, to have the, the pullout. And here's what I would typically uh, do, at least at the head end, oftentimes if I could at the foot end as well, and that is just put a stick around it so that the angle uh, coming out was a little greater and gave me a little more uh, headroom here. And because I had arranged the pockets in such a way on the interior, I typically set this up knowing which end my head was going to go at and where my feet were going to go at. And the indication for that is I put um, some um, high, highly reflective material here that I got from CPAX on one end but not on the other end. And typically I would also hang one of these down on one end. This, is, this came in very handy one time on the PCT in which I went out um, at night I think to get water or something and had a little bit of difficulty finding my tent uh, after dark. But having this highly reflective material strand, especially given the fact that I had a camo colored tent, uh, just really showed up very well on a headlamp. This, this yellow shows up at 
well at night uh, with the ambient light, but not enough from a distance. So that's another su suggestion I have is to uh, put some of this highly reflective, reflective material on it um, uh, in order to find that. I also put one on my uh, bear bag. So if I was getting up to uh, get my food in the middle of the night, or, or early in the morning, I should say, um, uh, and when it was still dark, I could, I could find out at a glance, just by shining my headlamp around, where my bear bag was. Okay, enough of the bear bags. This is, this is the XL, the Duplex L. Uh, the first thing, I still haven't gotten in it, first thing I notice on unraveling it, it it has these um, these stays here so whereas I used a stick uh, to use that uh, it, it has incorporated into it these stays uh, I'm not sure that I'm gonna keep those I'm just may you know not carry those two stays and find a local stick and uh, make it work that way that, that seems to work just fine but it has no capability you know to pull it out higher up here there's no there's no uh, pullouts like there is on this one. Okay, the other thing right off the bat is it is so much more translucent. I mean, you can see inside here, and certainly at night if you have the headlamp on, uh, with this kind of material, and I kind of got a darker one, uh, everyone's going to be able to see you inside and exactly, you know, what you're doing. Um, so it's not the greatest. Um, but it is not available in camo. Okay, so now I'm gonna get in. And I've unzipped it. And it's sort of weird because, it was, so the, the major difference between this and the original is it's longer. I think it is six inches longer. And in putting my sleeping bag in here, you can see how much more space this is from, the, from that 72 inch inflatable pad. A lot more room. Get my shoes off here. Get inside. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. This this fixes. Yeah. I mean, you can see my feet are a long ways away. Even the additional material at the end, where my sleeping bag is going to go. And I have lots of space here at the head. There must be six, eight inches between the top of my head and the far end. So this is going to be, this is going to be better. This corrects the chief deficiency for someone who's over six feet tall uh, of, this, of this model. I do like these on the side better than the ones at the end. I almost never used the ones at the end. I was going to cut them off just to save the weight, but whatever. I will probably modify this like I had the old one with another pocket sort of right about in here so I can just sit up, get my glasses. I know it's not, my, my glasses will never be on the, on the floor and I will, I'm not going to break them. Uh, I do see the loops up here, so I will be able to um, string that, string the guy wire, or the guy line right there, and I will almost certainly uh, put put that line in there to put my lamp on. And I probably will put another another uh, pocket. I, I did get one or two extra ordered when I ordered this tent. I, I do like that. And this is how much space I have to the top. So even with a with a mummy hood on or or uh, some sort of uh, insulated cap, uh, I am not going to be pushing out the ends of this. Um, yeah, this corrects what I think is the chief design flaw of the original duplex for anyone over six feet. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it. I think I'm going to be happy with it. It's slightly, slightly uh, more weight. I'll have to look it up and put it in this video, comparing and contrasting. Uh, but I do like this. Yep. 
my new my new home <laughs> love listening to the birds and the basketball being played across the street well I hope some of you uh, may find this helpful informative um, I thought a lot a lot <laughs> about what kind of tent I wanted uh, to replace the old original duplex. Just get another duplex, get an altiplex, get another tent from another manufacturer. Uh, but this is, what I, this is what I decided on. I think I'm going to be very happy. Um, I will say one closing thought. Dyneema for a tent material is wonderful. Uh, I have never used, almost never used, a ground cloth under it. Almost never carried one. Uh, it's not necessary. I had no holes on this after uh, thousands and thousands of miles. If you do get a hole in the in the tent floor, easily repaired with some tape, uh, which they do include a little bit of uh, uh, tape uh, in the new in the new tents. So not a problem. And. Uh, some of you who have seen my videos before of the buffeting that I have endured in some of those uh, thunderstorms on the CDT, uh, these, this material is tough, is tough. Yes, after, you know, whatever it was, six, seven thousand miles, I was getting some leakage along, along the ridge line there where the seam is, but that was easily repaired. Um, looking forward to using it. I'm looking at the weather here. The next couple days, where I intend to go, is uh, going to be nice. Probably no rain. But uh, later in the week, I, I could get some rain. Maybe staying in the shelter. We'll see. Stay tuned.